many of those people who were shit were leaving a funeral inside the church. That's so up. Oh my God, I shot this man in his head. I'm in the head, G. And you, and you think That's it's messed up, but you recording it? Nigga, I think you need to drive off, bro. These exotic boys, smoke exotic ops. You ain't heard about murder boys, we got exotic glocks. Tied to pull up real fast, with a lot of shots. Bitch, I'm feeling just like Mac, I got a lot of guap. What am I like, gang? So listen, check it out. I posted a video the other day, and, and I said this a few times in my videos, and a lot of people are super simple-minded, or they just don't come from the life, so they just don't get what I'm talking about, you feel me? Well, that's why I be saying people need to shut the f*** up, and you know what I'm saying? But in one of the last videos, I compare a lot of people in the streets to people at war, right? Now, I wasn't comparing, I wasn't saying that it's the same exact thing. Somebody talking about something, one's legal and one's illegal. I know that, bozo. I ain't slow. You feel me? I know war is legal, but one of my point is mor morally, it's the same thing. Because see, if the president and the governor didn't tell you it was illegal or didn't tell you that war was legal, you wouldn't think like that. I said it's the same sh for this only reason. As soon as I get done with this, I'm going to get into the video. I said it's the same thing for this reason. Y'all don't understand what it's like to grow up in a neighborhood, hang out with your friends, y'all playing video games one day, and then one of your homies get because of a fight at school. And now they sh at you too. You was right. You was standing right there too. So now you 14 years old. You got to have a on your waist. If you see the op pull up and you know he just killed your homie last week, what you going to wait for him to shoot you first? But they paint this picture as if we, the people in the streets is just demons and evil. But the people who go over to got another country and sniping niggas heads off so we could, so just so America could take their oil. We, they sniping niggas heads off over there, but they, they, they heroes, right? But these niggas not heroes for protecting they self and their community. Maybe not to you because that's how the news painted. But they see you one of them motherfuckers that can't think for yourself. So I don't even really, I ain't even to go back and forth. That's why I ain't going back and forth in no comments. I'm here to tell y'all, put it down on, on y'all for real like it is right here. Like, you don't know what that's like for somebody trying to kill you because of where you hang out at every day. People saying, oh, you, they chose that. Most of these people didn't choose that for themselves. If you was born in O-Block, you're just, you're from O-Block, bro. And if the niggas from 63rd see you and they know you live over here, they will you just to get a point on they skull, folks. So no, with that being said, if you got a King Von or you got a, any of these people that's known to step for they, for they hood, for they community, for they people, I'm, a, I'm finna go get them before they come over here and get us. Because they just my homie yesterday. They just did this last week. They just almost me today. So I'm finna go over here and these niggas before they, before they do something, before they hurt me and my, fe my people. You feel what I'm saying? The concept... Is the same thing. You're protecting the. I'm comparing war and streets, protecting the people. Now, if you just out here shitting people for no reason, you innocent kids, then I ain't talking about that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, I'm trying to get you to understand why my got the respect that they got. With all that being said, we finna jump into the video, Ski. What'd he say? Who that is? Who's Ski? What? Wooski. Dooski. Boosie, y'all know how to <laughs> f I'm bumming. Six oh, that's the old, uh, that's old Mimo. Chicago police were trying to figure out even all that, even that gun swinging. If you look at military gun, military pictures, they standing over dead bodies too. Regardless, it don't, don't, I'll just be saying, don't try to act like they over there doing something great and these people over here doing something bad. They doing the same shit. It's just that the governor and the president and the mayor told you that one was illegal and one was not, so you think one is okay and one ain't. It's the same thing, bro. Somebody mama, they blowing people mamas up. They blowing people uh, cribs up. They doing worse than this, if you really want to be honest with you. They sending missiles and blowing up whole neighborhoods, bro. Blowing up whole countries, bro. And y'all think these people demons because they <laughs> people that's trying to kill them? Y'all y'all stupid ass on. Six people outside a funeral this afternoon. Uh, and at first I heard like maybe five to eight gunshots and called my neighbor and confirmed it. Right. Then after that, it was just like a hailstorm of gunshots. Is that pink, red, red, pink? What the hell it is? Shots. 
What up? She got man? the mohawk the side braid. You know what's the deal. <laughs> Things have been hot in Chirac with the talk being about Quando Rondo. They now that his homie Lil Tum, that? who ends in Vaughn's life, is out on bail. R.I.P. Vaughn. But in all this heat, sure. there still is the one man that was the main op with Vaughn while he was still living. His name is known in the trenches, and his connections run deep in the streets. He's known as King Op, FBG Wooski, and his title came with how dangerous he was to his ops like Vaughn. Today, we're going to dive into his life and why he's considered such a savage that strikes fear in his ops. So I want y'all to understand this right now. You three blocks away, even if this happens every day, you three blocks away, you just trying to go to school and play basketball, bro. But they de these niggas know you in O Block and you know they, you know, you know, you seen this man just kill your homie yesterday. You got a gun on your waist. Are you finna wait for him to blow at you or are you finna blow first? But they, you going to get on the news and they going to call you a gangbanger. An evil person, a ruthless, all that. And then when that nigga land off that plane from the military and he got 700 bodies, he don't even know what he over there fighting for. He just fighting. He got 700 bodies, y'all. <laughs> but when he catch a body from, then now y'all, oh, it's not the same thing. He, these are stupid. Like, it's a kid coming just don't into understand. the world, innocent, pure, becomes someone that could pull the trigger without hesitation taking the okay. life, running the streets, and tormenting people to the point where they'd hit up a funeral to get them. Well, I asked myself the same thing, and the truth is both sad, yet kind of gains respect to see the world some are forced to grow up in. Right. Many believe Wooski's home was always- You see what he said? Some people, the world, some people are forced to grow up in. Did you hear that? Lawrence, he was actually from the very place that he haunted with his savagery. Him and his big bro, Big Mike, lived in Parkway Gardens, mm. a section of Wick City and O Block. Yeah. Crazy thing to note here, that plays a huge part in what molded Wooski was that his brother was a BD and okay. Wooski was a GD. Okay. Might seem strange from the outside, but that in these streets, all the time, though. that's nothing new. Yeah. Because Big Mike had love for his little bro Wooski, he stood as the force that kept him safe in the streets, even after linking with the other side. Right. Wooski started clicking up with the STL EBT, who had a heavy beef with Wick City. Right. At this point, you probably thinking why switch sides like that, because dudes don't play. Wooski from a young age. That's probably just who he hung out with, though. That's his, his friends. Blood. Most of the time, it, just be, it don't be, I chose this side. It just be when you go to school, these your friends. Like, you feel me? You just go to school, and this you end up kicking it with dude. And then he introduced you to his cousin. Then his cousin introduced you to his brother. And that ended up being duck. And you feel me? It's just, it just how shit play out. I don't think most niggas don't be like, I'm going to be a BD. Like, <laughs> you feel me? Hold on, y'all. Before we get back into the video, because we finna get right back into it. I got to tell y'all about the Moolah membership. The Moolah membership is a website that I started a few years ago. Since I started this website, I have been able to put on so many of y'all. And I want you to be the next person to get put on. I'm going to give you instructional videos, step-by-step -step instructions. I'm literally giving you lessons out weekly, daily, for you to understand these different categories. We're talking about business, financial literacy, credit, crypto. We're talking about stocks. We're talking about Amazon. We're talking about dropshipping. We're talking about YouTube. I'm literally giving you the gems to be a boss, the gems to be a successful entrepreneur in 2023. So this is all you have to do. Click the link in the description. Sign up right now for the low, low price of $50 a month, bro. $50 a month, you're gonna get access to a one-on-one -on -one help with me. You're gonna get access to my group chats where my experts worldwide work around the clock, 24 seven, to make sure you have the best stock and crypto call outs. That means all you gotta do is buy the same stocks and cryptos that I'm buying and make some of the all this bread. Very simple, very easy on Broke Gay. Stop waiting, stop procrastinating. Click the first link in the description right now, especially if you want to be a boss. And if you dead serious, man, if you want to put that work in and get that money on, I'm talking about that easy money on, click that link in the description, shorty, right now, because we only got 2,000 spots, and I would hate to see you be missed out. Skate. Bro even started rocking with FBG, getting close to Duck and Tuka. RIP to them both. Right. Oh. RIP to everybody, man. Chewing, chewing. Wooski would begin adopting beef with his new associates, often targeting TYMB. He would avoid beefing with Wick City because of his brother. It really okay. seems like even on opposite ends, their blood ties meant more than the gang code. Okay, this, so however, he avoided, he avoided, yeah. Wooski was still his dipping brother probably with passed City with STL, but never on Merkin. Brawls might break out, but the guns never came out. Right. That was until him and some STL members had an altercation one time, and Reezy from Wick City would lose his life. That mm. was already bad, but what made it worse were rumors that Wooski, very young at the time, was a trigger man. And at that point, any protection his big bro would provide was lost. He officially became a top priority for retaliation from a right. bunch of ops yep. and had to move out of O Block. Yep. This would make him even tighter with STL on. as they took him in. Yep. Wooski would end up aiming his firearm towards the place he once lived in a feud between the two sets. Wooski never made light of the situation. In a tweet made by Wooski back then, it could be seen how serious things got. This back and forth will lead to him and King Von becoming enemies. 
enemies. See regard- how see how easy that is? You see how easy that is? You go you live over here. You into it because of who your friends is from school. Your brother over here, he do this, that, the third. Y'all get into a fight. Somebody end up dying. Now they trying to kill you. Now I go over here with these people. And now they trying to kill me every day, bro. What do you want me to do? Just sit here on the block every day and die? Or you want me to go to school so they can catch me outside of school? Or you want me to go work at Popeye's so the whole hood know where I work at and they can just come wait for me to get off? It don't be a lot of choices for us, bro. It don't be a lot of choices. That's why when niggas be rapping or YouTubers or any type of way you make it out, that's why it's so celebrated because you a damn near a superhero. You damn near Batman in the flesh to make it out of that. You feel me? To make it out of that, get to school every day, keep your head level, not go to jail, not get smoked. You feel what I'm saying? And build up whatever you got going on. That shit is hard, bro. It's not easy, bro. And I wasn't even, you feel me? I wasn't even neck deep in the streets like that. So imagine for these people that's really niggas outside looking for them specifically. You know, I was the nigga. I was the nigga like, yeah, we'll catch they little homie. You know what I'm saying? For sure. That he be out there with them niggas. We'll catch them. Well, for they ain't outside looking for me, though. Because I want the one sliding on them. You feel me? That was my homie now. So, but, it, you know. All right, under this was filled. These m- actually. Was man and, you know. The Merc and Navon's homie platoon. Unable to personally catch Wooski, Vaughn would get the next best thing at the time. I remember, Wooski's bro. cousin, Modell. Wooski the cousin, yeah. painted a dark scene. Showing just how hungry Vaughn was for revenge. He would not only murk Modell, but leave his cousin with bullet holes. So much so that doctors said intestines fell through their hands when they picked him up. Luckily, Damn. Miles somehow survived, confined to a wheelchair, but Vaughn accomplished what he came to do. And Modell. This would set things in motion that intensified their beef even more. But can we just pause it? They said they said the intestines fell out on a doctor's hand when. God damn towards Vaughn, but Wooski was out for all his ops. Wooski and STL EBC were sliding on the O, and the O was sliding back. Right. It was an endless game of cat and mouse. Through it, Vaughn and Wooski seemed to develop respect for each other, even as rivals. They would go back and forth on Twitter like it was nothing. It's crazy how calm and jokingly they act with so much bad intent in their mind for the other. Yeah. And honestly, if you had, if you know somebody from the military that was really on the front line for real, you would know that a lot of these stories, it'd be the same thing. They might not be on Twitter, but, I, you know, I know people that went to the military, went to war, too, and, you know, it's a certain person. It might be a warlord on the other side. Like, we scared of him because we know he, he like that for real. He cut your goddamn leg off, pop your ass two times with a trip wire, and you don't know what happened. You hear me? So they now, now it's like, okay, yeah, we respect him, but we got to go get him. We got to go get him because he, you feel me? So they, they, they might have, they was respectful to each other in the streets, but it was never like they was going to respect each other like, hey. Shake each other's hand. No, they was, you feel me? Plus, King Von probably got cool with him from living in the O. Really, before all everything happened. He was scared to walk in the store. You look me in the eye. He would tally scores in public with Von about the stats for who has the most bodies. Like it was nothing. What happened <laughs> next would turn things upside down. Remember Wooski's big bro, Big Mike? Yeah. He would murk a dude by the name of Malcolm Stuckey. Oh! Fourteen. This would be the hit that got both him and Von Book with the first degree hit. Never! With King Von in 2014. So King, so Wooski this, brother was with Von when they, when they, when they, when they hit Stucky like that. Would be the hit that got both him and Von Book with the Never, first hit. I didn't know that. Attempted hits. See, this I knew, I knew, I hit always knew who Bro Book was. The first degree hit. I always got, knew who Bro was. You feel me? But I ain't never put that. I ain't never know that was Wooski brother though. I'm looking at him like I know folks like when I first showed him earlier. But I ain't know that was Wooski brother though. That's crazy. Of attempted but that hits. shit make this at home. It make Wooski. it, yeah. Seeing even his bro now turning against him. Right. Wooski's heart was getting closer to human life. Wooski's ops would have a field day on his gang when he was missing in action from 2015 to 2017, having been in the pen on a gun charge. Mm. Wooski would soon get his payback upon his release. The tables were turned. It was now Vaughn who was on the inside fighting this case. Wooski and a couple STL EBT members would catch HK, the headshot king, from the old slipping while spinning the block for <laughs> ops. HK would try to run. Oh, he was spinning the block and they got him. Escape. With multiple shots about his body, Wooski was out for blood, and every pull of the trigger emptied a bit of his rage and pain. Right. Wooski was now bumped further up the priority list for his ops, and he was becoming too much of a threat that was fearless in the streets. Wooski would send hints online saying that Vaughn was next to go. Go to HK pack. He talking about the HK pack. This attracted the attention of Vaughn's homies, who were ready to move for Wooski for his disrespect. I ain't know that was supposed to be Wooski that did that HK either though. Wooski, keep my little cousin name out your mouth. Who that is? Talking about niggas ain't dying, niggas. Talking about Vaughn, niggas. That's my blood, niggas. But Wooski, being the Chirac savage he is, didn't give a damn and 
continue to hunt his ops, even coming to their own hood. We out here right now. Them boys running. They the running. They ain't out here. This is hunting. Oh. They no. run. There's some hoes on Tuka. Bro was a different breed. Whiskey was building confidence in the street authority, even going as far as claiming his invented op blocks like TYMB, O Block, and D Block. O Block. What else? Four six hundred call itself on Tuka. We invented D Block. That goofy ass D thing. Shit. What else? What else? What else y'all want to go to? You talking about? He on that, like, he live on that snitch on that stuff. Lord, we I'm invented right. that. But this still wasn't enough torment to satisfy his hatred for his ops. In January 2018, he dropped a video for the diss track, Computers Remix. That's the only thing I don't agree with, like, you know, like, if if if, if you into it with your ops foe and they trying to kill you every day and you end up knocking one down and you catch a body foe, I ain't getting on Instagram bragging about it like, like my homies ain't got too, you feel me? Or like, I'm just invincible, like, my ain't come do that to me. You feel me? Like. I ain't never been with that, and I don't even, I ain't never agree with it either. Or that snitching on yourself, no. The track shot up to popularity, highlighting Wooski over the beat. I remember when that, I remember when that song came and out. Violating his ops and rapping about hits he's done. This only incited more rage, and his ops wasn't going to stand for Five it. News. They would slide on Mob Dooski the man, leaving him in a pool of blood with a shot to the head. Dooski was well respected and connected in the streets, and Wooski's ops knew how much he meant to him. Yeah. The plot that nearly claimed Wooski's life was set in motion. Dooski's funeral created that a was perfect Dooski's opportunity. Funeral. For yeah. Yeah. I ain't, I forgot. I ain't even know. Well, I, I ain't gonna say I forgot. I didn't even know. I, I know Wooski got, you know what I'm saying, happened at the funeral, but I didn't know that was supposed to be Dooski. That was Dooski funeral, you know what I'm saying? But I do know that they was close. For Get Back, in full effect. But Get Back was on the minds of both sides right. because Wooski's crew was heated over Dooski's hit. The clock was ticking, but Von and them wasn't playing around. Right. They had everything mapped out and was so confident in their retaliation that Von and e Dog FaceTimed Wooski the day before the funeral and promised they had a surprise for him. No. Hey, what's your name? Hey, hey, this is, we go surprise? You talking about tonight. We go surprise, bro. The day we gonna arrived, surprise you. Wooski's ops made good on their promise. All hell broke loose. They October saw his at the damn. Bullets would rain down on the funeral, and Wooski would collect a shot to the head. Rugal, who was present, would describe the oh, chaotic was there? scene. I, to be honest, I kind of felt like something, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I thought it was gonna happen. Yeah. That's some real shit. It's off the strength, like, that's Dooski. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Whenever you mention Dooski, you better mention the movie. We've learned a little bit more about the victims this what afternoon. Was that, there were a total of six people who were shot out. Oh, 90 second cottage. It was a pandemonium. A I don't know why they be doing right that. Right after that happened, the many of those people who were shot were leaving a funeral inside the church. That's so up. Oh my God! I shot this man in his head. I'm in the head, G. And you, and you think That's it's messed up, but you recording it? Nigga, I think you need to drive off, bro. That's so messed up. They that boy in his head, like, bro, what the? F I don't understand people, oh, bro. Oh my God! By some miracle, Wooski would survive, but right. Von was still rejoicing, finally catching them lacking. You see him? I'm gonna follow him. I ain't gonna lie, he ain't been the same. He don't talk no more. None. I don't know what. The the talk was that Wooski had been taken out, but Duck, I'm saying Wooski's rest close Wooski, homie, not the fuck around with you dumbass people. I really see this internet be, be people love. Dispel all rumors of Wooski's demise. Wooski was a fighter for real, and during rehab to regain his motor skills, his health deteriorated, but getting back to his old self. Right. Real niggas though. Them your real homies come to your hospital bed after that and play. Yeah, asking them real homies, boy. I mean, we're real homies, boy, on phone now. <clears throat> See, there's only a few people in there. Before long, he was on his feet, turning up with the game. <laughs> Sadly, Von would lose his life on November 6, 2020, right. in an altercation with Quando Rondo. Wooski wasted no time dissing his op as a send-off to his grave. You say who that is in my blood? A whole lot of Parkway guard niggas. <laughs> 
<laughs> Wooski has been laying low since, trying to make a full recovery. After all, he took a shot to the head. It's crazy he's still even right. functioning back to normal. Exactly. His near grave experience hasn't stopped him from still being on his dirt. He recently got right back to things, why. dropping tracks against his ops. That was weak, bro. I ain't <laughs> I ain't you gonna see it count with you. That wasn't it right there. You hear me? Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck them grade. That was not it, bro. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie to you. I, shit. I, <laughs> nigga, I don't know what's wrong with these people. I, I get hit in the head. I'm taking my ass to the house. Do you hear me? I'm the nearest church home. Y'all tweaking, boy. One thing for certain, he's earned his street cred. It might lead to his end. But his title as King Op isn't trolling nor capping. Could only wish the best for him in the streets and that he chooses to pursue music fully and leave the street life behind. Please, Nothing man. but losses in that life, man. So the next one. Be safe, y'all. Especially after now, after now, this is what I do, I will say. After a while, bro, that's on you, bro. You know what I'm saying? If you still, if you grown as hell and you still trying to be a street nigga and you, you feel me? Once you, once you pass, once you get out of high school, and you get out of out of out of out of yeah out of high school. You it's the choice is on you, bro. Cause you could have went to college. It didn't have to be no good ass college. You hear me? You could have went to college somewhere in Ohio, and you would have been away from all the ops. Like you feel what I'm saying? But it be niggas be trying to not be scared so bad. They don't want to. I ain't I ain't scared. I ain't finna run. They didn't don't think I'm scared. I don't give a damn what you think. You know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing scary about going somewhere and trying to better your life. It ain't nothing scary about moving to the suburbs or moving to Texas. You feel me? Y'all know how cheap it is to live in Texas, y'all better get the hell on, you feel me, so I do agree with that part, where people be saying, like, that shit on you, like, you don't gotta do that shit. you don't gotta still be, you don't gotta be on Instagram with the pipes, waving, like, oh, what's up, you know, it's gay, yeah, it's gay, you feel me, you ain't gotta do that, you feel me, especially after you get so old, after you get old enough to the point where it's like, man, the decision on you, you could go get a, you could go move or do something else, you feel what I'm saying, even Iowa, a lot of niggas from Chicago move to Iowa, or like they'll just go to Iowa to get away because it's kind of close. But you can do other shit, gang. You don't got to sit on this block no more. You ain't got to stay right here no more. You ain't 16 no more. You got to live with your mama. And it ain't like that no more once you pass 18. You feel me? Like, you know what I'm saying? So you just got to keep you gotta keep it a buck. But like, I just I just don't like when motherfuckers be judging people that cr grow up in the ghetto or in the streets. You judging this person as if this person is some type of evil devil demon you feel what I'm saying? And really, he just doing the same thing that a lot of other people doing. He's trying to survive regardless. The police, the firefighters, street niggas, war veterans, uh, uh, um, construction workers, whatever it is you're doing, you're trying to survive in your life. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to survive, bro. You feel me? Because it's a lot of, it's a lot of kids. I'm going to put it like this. It's a lot of kids in them other countries when, when America go to war, it's a lot of kids in them other countries that got forced into war. It's a lot of kids in them other countries that grew up just like you do in the hood. You grow up in this neighborhood. You find out you, a war starts outside. The, the, another people, they coming over here to kill your daddy, your brother, your uncle, them, whatever. What you going to do? You going to blow up with everybody else? You going to run and just be homeless and broke? Or you going to pick up this AK-47 and try to fight for your life? You feel me? But you can't blame a nigga that's 14 from Afghanistan. That he was just out here minding his business and the war came to his doorstep. And he picked up an AK and he handled his business. You can't, you can't judge him. You also can't judge the nigga that ran. You also can't judge the little boy that, 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 that surrendered and ran to America like, please, I'm just a kid. You can't judge none of them. You can't judge nobody for that situation unless you in that position, bro. And if you ain't never been in no type of position like that, if you grew up and you went to school when you was peaceful and you rode a school bus to school and everything was good and it was regular and the worst thing that happened in your school was a nigga might sneak a little weed in, if that's what that's that's the difference you got, that's the story you lie you live, you can't talk about this. You can't even you can't mention this right here because you don't know what that shit like. You ain't never had bullets flying past your head. So what you saying don't even make, it don't even mean nothing, to be honest with you, gang. Like, it, I, nigga don't even want to hear what you got to say. You just comment off what you think. You don't know. You don't know. You ain't never seen, you ain't never held your homie in your, in your arms and you like, man, just keep breathing. You ain't never been trying to pick your homie up, put your homie in a car and he die in your arms while you trying to get him to the hospital. You don't know what that's like. So how the f*** you going to tell me you say I'm slow, gang. 